Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about traveling with National Firearms Act, or NFA Firearms. The Transformer Rail from Manicore Arms offers unparalleled versatility for both the AR-15 and now AK platform rifles. This free-floating rail system allows you to attach both M-Lock and Key Mod segments, Picatinny rail segments, as well as a host of other options. You can bet that almost any attachment will work. Available in OD Green, Flat Dark Earth, and of course Black, this lightweight setup might be just what you need. To get 10% off anything you buy, use the code TGC10 at ManicoreArms.com. A lot of you have been leaving comments asking how to travel with NFA firearms. The answer to the question is, it kind of depends. Let's start with taking a look at what the law actually says. The Gun Control Act, or GCA, which I already covered in a previous episode, and there should be a link somewhere around here, states that it shall be unlawful for any person other than a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, licensed dealer, or licensed collector to transport in interstate or foreign commerce any destructive device, machine gun, as defined in section 5845 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, or the NFA, short barrel shotgun or short barrel rifle, except as specifically authorized by the Attorney General, consistent with public safety and necessity. So if you're licensed under the GCA, you can transport NFA firearms without obtaining prior permission. The regulations state, among other things, that no person shall transport any destructive device, machine gun, short barrel shotgun, or short barrel rifle in interstate or foreign commerce under the provisions of this section until he has received specific authorization to do so from the director. Authorization granted under the section does not carry or import relief from any other statutory or regulatory provision relating to firearms. So as a non-licensee, you need permission from ATF to transport NFA firearms over state lines. For those of you keeping score at home, you'll notice that silencers and any other weapons, or AOWs, are noticeably absent from the list. More on that later. So how does one obtain permission from the Attorney General in order to transport NFA firearms? You need to submit an ATF Form 5320.20 in duplicate, or alternatively a letter, also in duplicate, containing all of the information required on the form. So just submit the form. Information on the form includes a lot of information that should be pulled from the Form 1 or Form 4, such as who the firearm is registered to, the manufacturer, the type of firearm, caliber, model, serial number, etc. It also asks the time period the firearm will be away from its original location, if we aren't talking about a permanent move. We'll talk about a permanent move in a different episode. You can submit a form for a period of up to one year. The form also has a spot for the reason of the transportation of the firearms. All lawful purposes, training class, hunting, etc. are all suitable reasons. On my form for reference, I listed all lawful purposes. I'd recommend you send the form to ATF at least two months in advance to ensure you have it back in time for when you actually have to travel. Now I know some of you are yelling at the screen, but Adam, you told me there would be more about these silencers and AOWs later. We can see that the law does not require that ATF be notified or approve transportation of AOWs and or silencers. However, I'd recommend you submit a form anyway. The reason for that recommendation is that there's one more piece of paper you can produce to show law enforcement if you have an interaction with them. It shows that ATF approved the transportation of the firearm to a certain destination and it may save you a little bit of a headache. Some things to keep in mind. The NFA firearms have to be legal in the end location. You can't take a silencer to Delaware or New Jersey stand or New York or communist Illinois or wherever they aren't legal because they're not legal there. Illinois Nazis. I hate Illinois Nazis. ATF's approval does not provide relief from other firearm statutes, so you have to comply with all applicable laws. If you're sending the firearm using a contract or a common carrier, such as UPS or FedEx, a copy of the form must be with that firearm for the duration of that time. The easiest solution? Stick a copy of the form in the box with the gun. So if you want to travel with NFA firearms, you'll need to fill out ATF's form, submit it in duplicate, and have an approved copy before you leave in order to transport anything other than an AOW or silencer across state lines. And remember, I always recommend you get a form for those anyway. Hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how to travel with NFA firearms. If you like this episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. Have a question you want answered on this show? Head on over to the legal brief section of theguncollective.com. Don't forget to like The Gun Collective on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Full30, Snapchat, and wherever else you can catch us on social media. And as always, thanks for watching.
The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.